So this is actually part two of a, a series called The Heart of the Father. Esto es realmente es la parte dos de, el, eh, de la serie, pero de un, de corazón hacia un padre. Now, if you missed that one last week, si te lo la please la pasada, go back and see it. Por favor, vuelve hacia atrás y vaya a verlo. Because this really does build on what I talked about last week. I'm going to give you in a nutshell what we talked about last week. <laughs> that was probably a weird one to translate, wasn't it? <laughs> um, but last week I told three stories. The first one was about the elephant rope. The elephant rope. Una de las historias fue de eh, un elefante y una soga. In, in, in a nutshell, <laughs> in short, <laughs> en it, it was to show us that lies have power. Es para enseñarnos que la mentira tiene poder. Because whatever we believe has power over us. Porque lo que nosotros creamos tiene poder sobre nosotros. The second story was about the fig kini. La segunda historia. <laughs> fig kini. Come on, you can't translate that? Tinkini. <laughs> it's, it's a fig leaf bikini. <laughs> fig leaf bikini. Fig leaf. Fig leaf. Un bikini, parece. I'm stretching him today. Un bikini de hoja. <laughs> she was here last week, so she's explaining. <laughs> and that story was to show us that our self-righteousness is not enough. Our self-righteousness. Uh, we, we can't make ourselves right. It took God intervening to make us right. Tuvo que Dios intervenir para nosotros estar correcto. And the last story was about the prodigal son. Y la última era del hijo pródigo. And it was to begin to show us God's heart. Y era para enseñar el corazón de Dios. That he's not just waiting to judge you. Que él no está esperando para juzgarte. He's waiting to welcome you home. Él está esperando para recibirte de nuevo a casa. In that story, we see the prodigal son coming back after messing up big time. He's coming up with all his plans to try and get back into his father's house. But it says as soon as his father saw him afar off. That his father ran to him. Que su padre corrió hacia él. Embraced him. Y, y lo, y lo, y lo abrazó. Kissed him. Lo besó. Clothed him in the finest robe. Lo vistió con las mejor, mejores ropas. Put a ring of authority on his finger. Puso un, un anillo de autoridad en Put su sandals dedo. on his feet. Le puso sandalias en sus pies. And killed the fatted calf. Y mató. That means he was making steaks, people. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta tell them about the steaks. 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 Meat. Steak. Steak. Yes. We, say, was, we say the same way. Steak. Oh, say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me translate for, that for you. Steak. <laughs> mm, mm, steak. Okay. Carne, <laughs> carne. Muy bueno, huh? <laughs> I, I can't go there again this week. I was talking about food all last week. <laughs> but he threw a party for his son. He didn't deserve it. It was just because of the father's heart. His father loved him. So he welcomed him back. Despite everything he had done. Y no importando todo lo que había hecho. So that's what we're going to pick up today. So de ahí es que vamos a nosotros tomar hoy. So we know the Father loves us. So sabemos que el Padre nos ama. 
But does he really just forgive us? Pero realmente solamente nos perdona. If you're like me, you si tú eres como yo, had some doubts when you came to the Lord. Right? Like, it can't be this easy. No puede ser así de fácil. We're so used to having to work for everything that to actually get something for free does not make sense. You may think, well, we're in Christmas. We give stuff away now. We, we get stuff for free, right? But at least when you get old enough to make money, there's kind of an expectation that you're going to give something back, isn't there? So even in our most generous time of the year, we really don't know what it's like to get something totally free. And lastly, what are we going to do once we're forgiven? So I'm going to again today tell you three stories. Actually, the first one's a couple different stories put together. La primera en realidad son muchas historias puestas en uno. Has anybody ever gotten a rescue dog? ¿Alguna vez alguien ha tenido un perro de, de rescate? Right, I figured there'd be a couple people here. Now, for those that have, even for those that have not uh, had one, you'll still understand this, I believe. Aún para aquellos que no han tenido uno, a lo, lo puede ser que lo entiendan. Because when you get that dog, if they came from a home where they were beaten, then they will act totally different from one that you raise up yourself. You're reaching out to pat it, and it's cowering away. You say, oh, come here. Le dice, ah, venga acá. And he runs. Y se va. Because of what has happened before, he is scared of you. De lo que pasó tiene miedo de ti. It has nothing to do with you. No tiene nada que ver It has to do with their past. Tiene, tiene que ver con el Are you going to punish that dog into loving you? ¿Tú vas a castigar ese perro hasta que te ame. It doesn't work that way, does it? No funciona de esa manera, ¿verdad que no? You're not going to smack that dog into loving you. Tú no vas a darle cantazo a ese perro hasta que te lo llenes de amor. And yet, this is the picture we have of God. Y esa es la foto que nosotros tenemos de Dios. We read, for God so loved the world. We read, for God so loved the world. Nosotros leemos que Dios ama al mundo. And we're thinking, so that he can punish us next. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? And yet, that's how we act lots of times, isn't it? We come to God. We receive his love. And then we constantly do the sick. He's going to beat us. We've bought into a lie. It's like that elephant rope. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to last week. <laughs> to bring this away from dogs, my wife, uh, my wife and her father's relationship was not great. And how many of you know even pastors struggle with things? My father-in-law could get very aggressive. And I don't don't say that to uh, I don't say that to dishonor him, but we need to be truthful. 
Yo no lo digo para deshonrarlo, pero tenemos que ser real. When Leslie and I got married, she was like a beaten dog. Cuando Leslie y yo nos casamos, ella era como un perro que estaba maltratado. If I raised my voice, si yo levantaba mi voz, she'd flinch or cower. Ella rápidamente eh, cerraba los ojos, asustaba y tenía miedo. Now, I wasn't about to hit her. Yo no le iba a dar. But I've told you my testimony. I did struggle with anger. Pero yo te, yo le contó mi testimonio y yo sí luché mucho con lo que era el rencor y el odio. So for me to raise my voice was not uncommon. Y para mí, levantar mi voz no era algo fuera de común. A big part of the first couple of years of our marriage was me learning to love my wife well. Eh, los primeros años de mi vida, de mi matrimonio, era yo aprender de cómo amar a mi esposa bien. That her reaction was going to depend on how I treated her. Que su reacción iba a ser depende de lo como yo la trataba a ella. Now, we all know that to be true, right? We all know that to be true. Todos sabemos que eso, ¿verdad? De, de, de eso ser real. But when you're dealing with somebody who has a past, Pero cuando tú estás lidiando con alguien que tuvo un pasado, it's magnified. Es algo más grande. Let me pivot this just a little bit. Vamos a voltear la historia un poquito. Do you know they actually did this huge study on kids to see what percentage of them would fall into the category of creative geniuses? That's someone who would be exceptional in the arts. Now, not one specific one, but like music, painting, uh, poetry, no, you know. Específico era como este, pintura, poetría, y diferentes cosas. Now, of course, you have to put it at the age they're at. Pero obviamente teníamos que ponernos en la edad que ellos estaban. But when they did this test, they found that like, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but this is close, okay. Pero cuando hicieron <laughs> este, este, este examen, esta prueba, It was like 95% of kids at five years old fell into the creative genius category. Yeah, fell into the creative genius category. When they went back and tested them again in five years, that number fell off to somewhere around 50%. Ese número cayó a como los 50%. Another five years, and it was somewhere in the teens. Otros cinco años más, y estaba uno en los 10%. And when they tested them again at 20, it was in the single digits. Y cuando lo volvieron a, a probar de nuevo, estaba en, el, en, el, en el, los dígitos sencillos. And the conclusion that the scientists came to was that the loss of creative ability is something we learn. The, 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 I forgot what I said now. <laughs> the scientists, uh, their, their conclusion was that the loss of creative ability was something that you learned. Es algo que tú aprendes. Think about that for a second. Piensa eso un momento. Let me put this in a way everyone will understand. If you have a child, si tú tienes un niño, and every day you're telling them you're stupid, y todos los días tú le dices, tú eres un tonto. you're never going to amount to anything. Ellos nunca van a hacer nada. Why can't you just learn? ¿Por qué tú no puedes aprender? 
I don't even know whose kid you are. None of us acted like this when we were young. Is that kid going to excel at anything? In the rare case that they do, it'll be out of this misguided need to perform. And it'll mess up their heads for the rest of their life. But Jesus, Pero Jesús. he can turn this around. Sí lo puede But the principle is something we need to understand. Pero lo, lo principal, lo que que entender. Because we bring this into our relationship with God. Esto a con Dios. <laughs> How many of you have heard this? You're just a sinner saved by grace. Tú solamente eres un pecador salvado por la gracia. You've heard that in church a lot, haven't you? Tú lo has escuchado en la iglesia, ¿verdad? Do you know that's not any place in the Bible? Tú sabes que eso no está en ningún lado de la Biblia. Because once you come to Christ, you are a new creation. Porque cuando tú vienes a Jesús, tú eres nueva criatura. The old things have passed away. Todas las cosas viejas ya pasaron. All things have become new. Todas las cosas se han convertido en nuevo. In God's eyes, you are no longer a sinner. En los ojos de Dios, ya tú no eres un you are a saint. Tú eres un santo. You are a child of God. Tú eres un hijo de Dios. You are loved. Tú eres amado. You are adopted. Tú fuiste adoptado. You're accepted. You're forgiven. You no longer live under that condemnation. Now, you may be a saint that still struggles with a sin. But sinner is no longer your identity. Pero siendo un pecador ya no es tu identidad. Amen? Amen. And if we don't realize it though, we are going to live under that condemnation. Si tú no rea- te, te das cuenta de eso, we'll be, as the Bible says, we'll be that dog that keeps on going back to its vomit. Va a, ser, va a ser como lo dice la Biblia, que va a ser como el perro que vuelve otra vez para su vómito. Just eating all the junk over again. Volviendo a comerse toda la porquería de nuevo. But God has paid too big a price for you to go back to that junk. We need to take it and honor what God has done. And realize he has made us for something better than this. I think I got ahead of myself. (laughs) We're going to get there. You see, a, a big problem is, is all we have ever heard is of God's judgment. Yeah, we, we know he loves us. Sí, sabemos que nos ama. But he loves us like somebody standing over us with a stick. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's the image I had of God when I came to him. Yo no sé de ustedes, pero esa es la imagen que yo tenía de Dios cuando yo vine a él. I thought, yeah, he loves me, he died for me, but if I mess up, he's going to smack me. And that's when we begin to bring in our earthly fathers. And how they treated us can play into this as well. So whether the lie is something you learned at home or unfortunately something you learned at church it's time to break that off from you. Because until you do you will never rise above. Just like telling a kid you're stupid To the point where they believe it. 
will trap them into never trying. Lo para nunca If you think you're just a sinner, si tú crees que solamente eres un pecador, you're going to, for the rest of your life, be stuck in chains. But I know somebody that came to set the captives free. Pero yo sé de alguien que vino a Libre. He came to open the prison doors, amen. <laughs> so we need to learn about the goodness of God. Romans chapter 2, I'm just going to hit this one quick. Romans chapter 2, verse 4 says, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? O menosprecias la riqueza de su benignidad, paciencia y longanimidad, ignorando que su benignidad te guía arrepentimiento, guía al arrepentimiento. Now remember, the word repentance actually means to change the way you think. Arrepentirse, lo que cambia es la manera de tu pensar. We've been taught that repentance means to change the way you act, right? But that's not what the Greek word means. Pero eso no es como significa la palabra it means to change the way you think. Now, action follows thought. Pero acción sigue al pensamiento. And thought follows belief. Y el pensamiento sigue tu creencia. So the same way, if you change the narrative with a child from you're stupid to you can do this. You are smart. De la misma manera, si podemos cambiar la narrativa de estar diciéndole, de decirle al niño, tú puedes, tú tienes la capacidad para hacerlo. That will open that door for that child to change the way they think. Because they're going to believe different. And now they have the ability to step into something they couldn't before. They now have the ability to try where they never even consider it before. And when you learn you have a good father, Cuando tú aprendes que tienes un buen padre, no matter how much you love or don't love your father here on earth, your father in heaven is perfect. El padre que está en los cielos es perfecto. And he loves you anyways. Y él te ama como <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the things he says about you y las cosas que él dice sobre ti, is that you're adopted. You're loved. You're my child. You've been set free. Because he who the sun sets free, he who the sun sets free, he who, no, he, he who the sun sets free. He, he's still in Puerto Rico time here. <laughs> Uh, I gotta go hang out in the beach with you sometime. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. El que el hijo libre, libera es libre. <laughs> you know, it, it's very fitting that we talk about the goodness of God in this season. Being. It's very fitting that we talk about the goodness of God in this season. You know, before Jesus, all the world had was this fearful expectation of judgment. But 2,000 years ago, something changed. This is what we celebrate in this Christmas season. Because God reached out his hand in love. And as you're going to see in this story, we acted like the beaten dog. Pero como tú ves en esta historia, nosotros actuamos como un perro agolpeado. 
God in love reached out to, towards man. Dios en amor extendió su mano. And man reacted in fear. Y el hombre reaccionó en temor. But we need to change También. what we believe. Pero tenemos que cambiar como creer. We need to see what God's intention was. Tenemos que ver la intención de Dios. But because if we change our belief, porque si nosotros cambiamos, then we can change the way we think. Podemos cambiar la manera como nosotros pensamos. And if we change the way we think, y si cambiamos la manera de pensar, it now opens the door to op change the way we act. Ahora podemos abrir las puertas de cómo nosotros actuemos. Luke chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. Okay, I'm going to read through this whole thing, then you read it, and then, uh, then we'll break it down. Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. It says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Lucas 2, del 8 al 14. Había pastores en la misma región que velaban y guardaban las vigilias de la noche sobre su rebaño. Y he aquí se le, se le presentó un ángel del Señor, y la gloria del Señor los rodeó de resplandor, y tuvieron gran temor. Pero el ángel les dijo, no temáis, porque he aquí os doy nuevas de gran gozo, que será para todo el pueblo que os ha nacido hoy en la ciudad de David, un Salvador, que es Cristo el Señor. Esto os servirá de señal. Hallaréis al niño envuelto en pañales, acostado en un pesebre. Y, a, y repentinamente apareció con el ángel una multitud de las huestes celestiales que alababan a Dios y decían, Gloria a Dios en las alturas y en la tierra paz. Buena voluntad para con los hombres. So I want to take you through and show you the important parts of this. Yo lo que quiero es enseñarte la, la, las partes importantes sobre esto. We see, first of all, when the angels appear, the shepherds reacted in fear. Vemos primeramente este, cuando los ángeles aparecieron, ellos tenían miedo. Their first reaction to meeting someone from heaven was to fear. La primera reacción de recibir a alguien de los cielos era tener miedo. So we see ourselves in there. So nosotros nos vemos en eso. We see that beaten dog. Nosotros vemos e e ese perro maltratado. Before we come to Jesus, all we know of God is that he will judge us. Antes, cuando nosotros venimos a Jesús, lo que, veni lo que conocíamos de Dios es que nos va a juzgar. And even after we come to God, we carry that with us. Y aún estando en Dios, eh, 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 seguimos arrastrando con eso. But here are the major points of the angel's message. Estos son los mayores puntos de, de, del mensaje del ángel. And realize this was a message straight from God. Y, reali y dándonos cuenta que esto es una, un mensaje directamente de Dios. <laughs> Number one was, do not be afraid. Número uno era, no tengan miedo. Amen. Amen. Do not be afraid. You're no meeting with God. Do not be afraid. Amen. Estás con Dios, no tengan miedo. Second off, Segundo, he came to bring good tidings of great joy. It's good news. And he doesn't come with just joy. It's a message of great joy. 
Con gozo, es con un mensaje de gran gozo. When in your life can you say you had a moment of great joy? Cuando en tu vida tú puedes decir que tú tuviste un momento de gran gozo. If you're like me, you can probably count it on one hand. Si tú eres como yo, tú puedes contarlo yo creo que con una mano. But God says, Pero Dios dice, the message of Jesus el mensaje de Dios is a message of great joy. Es Amen. Un mensaje de gran gozo. <laughs> and here's one you might miss. Y este es uno que lo haber He said, to all people. Dijo, Para todas las personas. Now, I'm gonna get, not going to get in some big theology thing here. No voy a entrar nada teológico ahora. Because some people get weird with this. <laughs> But here's something we can all agree on. When it says that, that good news, that great message is to all people. It means you qualify. Amen. You qualify. Repeat after me. Repite conmigo. I qualify. Yo cualifico. That's really weird when you do it with bilingual, isn't it? <laughs> okay. English first. I qualify. Yo cualifico. For the good news. For la gran noticia. I guess I got to say, repeat after me every time. <laughs> I qualify. Yo cualifico. For the good news. For the good news. Por la buena noticia. We're going to get you guys going out in no time here. All right. Praise God. <laughs> Next, he said that the one that's coming was going to be a savior. Y después dice que el próximo que venía era el Salvador. Notice he didn't say Good tidings of great joy to all people that a judge is coming. Si te damos cuenta, él nos dijo, el gran gozo y que viene un juicio para todo el mundo. That wouldn't make any sense now, would it? Eso no hubiera hecho ningún sentido, ¿verdad que no? Jesus didn't come as a judge. Él no vino como juez. Though there will be a day when all judgment will be committed to him. Va a haber un día que vamos a estar en un juicio. We live in a glorious time Pero un when Jesus has come as a Savior. De que Jesús vino como un It's good news. Esa buena <laughs> And then when the whole multitude of angels show up, y toda la de ángeles, eh, llegaron, they say glory to God. Dijeron, Gloria a Dios. Do you realize being a part of this message, it means that this whole thing brings glory to God? Him bringing you good news brings Him glory. So we need to stop cheapening it. We need to stop cheapening it. Cheapening. Cheapening. <laughs> cheapening. Making it cheap, you know. Not receiving the good news. Because when we do that, we're stealing glory from God. This brings him glory. That he would bring peace and goodwill towards men. Amen. Amen. You're ahead of the game. I like it. <laughs> so hearing the good news should lead us to repent. So escuchando la buena noticia nos debe llevar al arrepentimiento. To change the way we think. Para cambiar la manera de pensar. To stop hearing the message of God and cowering. It's good news. Jesus loves you. 
Dios te ama. The Father loves you. El Padre te ama. The Holy Spirit is with you. El Espíritu Santo está contigo. He even loves you too. Él también te ama. <laughs> See, God's reaching out his hand again. Dios está volviendo a estirar su mano de nuevo. We need to decide how we are going to react. Y nosotros tenemos que decidir de cómo nosotros vamos a reaccionar. I got one more story for you. Una historia más para usted. And we're going to read through it first. Y vamos a leerlo primero. I want you to, however this works for you, I want you to picture it. If you got a great imagination and you can read along and picture it, great. If you need a little help and you got to close your eyes, do it. But uh, if you fall asleep, I hear some snoring, I'm going to throw this. <laughs> All right, uh, John chapter 8. Juan, capítulo 8. Oops, where am I at? I lost it. There it is. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. It's a very familiar story. Historia bien familiar. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Now, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them and said, Again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Y Jesús se fue, se fue al monte de los olivos. Y por la mañana volvió al templo y todo el pueblo vino a él. Y sentando él le enseñaba. Entonces los escribas y los fariseos le trajeron una mujer sorprendida en adulterio. Y poniéndola en medio le dijeron, maestro, esta mujer... Ha sido sorprendida y en el, en el acto mismo del adulterio. Y en la ley de ley nos mandó Moisés a prediar tales mujeres. Tú pues, ¿qué dices? Mas esto decían tentándole para poder acusarle. Pero Jesús inclinando hacia el suelo escribía en tierra con el dedo. Y como ins, insistieran en preguntarle... Se enderezó y les dijo, el que de vosotros esté sin pecado, sea él primero en arrojar la piedra contra ella. E inclinándose de nuevo hacia el suelo, siguió escribiendo en tierra. Pero ellos, al oír esto, acusados por su conciencia, salían uno a uno, comenzando desde lo más viejo hasta los postreros. Y quedó solo Jesús. Y la mujer que estaba en medio, enderezándose Jesús, y no viendo a nadie sino a la mujer, le dijo, Mujer, ¿dónde están los que te acusaban? Ninguno te condenó. Ella dijo, Ninguno, Señor. 
Entonces Jesús le dijo, ni yo te condeno, vete y no peques más. Can I get this mic turned down just a little bit? It's getting a little feedback off from it for his. Okay. Now, realize under Mosaic law, there needed to be two or more witnesses. Eh, si nos damos cuenta, en la en ley mosaica, tenía que haber más de dos testigos. Now, think of what this sin is. Piensa de lo que este eh, pecado es. Don't think too hard. Pero no piensen mucho. <laughs> But <laughs> their culture was not like our culture. Pero su cultura no es como la cultura de nosotros. Where almost any affection would be behind doors. It, sexual sin was not out in the open as it is nowadays. Even today, somebody uh, committing adultery is going to hide it. So back then, they're really going to hide it, right? Pero en esos tiempos, <laughs> verdaderamente lo iban a esconder. So, how did these people just catch them in the act? So, ¿cómo estas personas solamente lo eh, pudieron atraparlo en el acto? We already know they're doing this to try and test Jesus, right? Ya sabemos, ¿verdad?, que están aquí haciendo esto para probar a Jesús. So, however this looks, it sounds like they set up a trap. Sea como sea como esto se ve, ellos estaban como que haciendo una trampa. So, they're either like, uh, uh, like peeping toms or... <laughs> o a lo mejor eran unas personas raras que estaban ahí velando por la ventana o algo. Or one of their people set her up. O uno de su gente la, la setió. Second off, if somehow they just came upon it, you are supposed to... Help keep your brother from sinning. Sea como sea que como ellos hayan llegado a eso a verla, nosotros supone que seamos ayudemos a nuestros hermanos mantenerlos lejos del pecado. So the chance of this being on accident is super slim. La posibilidad para que esto fuera solamente un accidente es bien pequeño. Second off. This kind of requires two people, doesn't it? <laughs> That's something that was the same back then. It takes two to tango. <laughs> so where's the guy? It was just, a month, uh, just as much against Mosaic law for the man to commit adultery as it was for the woman. And if they caught them in the act, y si lo, eh, ver en el acto, that means he was right there. <laughs> que él ahí. So already we're, we're seeing this double standard. So ahí podemos ver un, un estándar doble. You see, they're, they're just trying to catch Jesus. Their thinking is, if he says, don't stone her. They could say, see, he doesn't care about sin. He's not upholding the law. And if he says, go ahead, stone her. It was actually illegal for them to do that at the time. Under the rule of the Roman Empire, they were not allowed to stone people. So they're like, we've got him. One way or the other, we're going to get him. So picture it. You had these guys in their robes and looking all like high and mighty. Imagínatelo, estos hombres con esto, con estas túnicas y estos puestos ahí con 
con orgullo. And they have this lady that was just ripped out of a bed. She's probably grasping a, a sheet around her to cover herself up. Y este, y esta muchacha que fue arrastrada de la cama con una sábana arropada. She knows the Mosaic law. Ella también sabe la ley mosaica. She's thinking, I'm about to die. Ella lo que está pensando, que voy a morir. And they put her in the midst of this mob of people. Y la ponen en medio de, de una multitud de personas. Have you ever been alone in the middle of a mob that was unhappy? En algún momento tú estabas en una situación que tú estás en medio de unas personas que estaban molestas. The utter terror this poor lady must have been feeling. And on top of that, she knew what she did was wrong. This is what Jesus does. Y esto es lo que Jesús hace. Hmm. Such writing in the dirt. Comienza a escribir en la, en la tierra. Now, scholars have wondered and guessed at what he was writing. I'm just going to give you one of the theories. There's a whole bunch of them, it, and none of us know for sure. And none of us know for sure. But remember, they're talking about judging her according to the Mosaic law, right? And it says that he got down and wrote with his finger. Where else in the Bible does it talk about the finger of God? <laughs> Amen. When the Ten Commandments were given, it says God wrote them with his finger. Y el diez mandamiento dice que Dios eh, lo escribió con sus dedos. So I just kind of think he was just writing out the Ten Commandments. Y yo lo que estaba pensando es lo que estaba escribiendo los diez mandamientos. Because I don't care who you are, you've broken at least one of them. Porque no me importa quién tú eres, pero tú usted ha roto por lo menos uno de ellos. And as they urge him, he gets down to the last one. He's written them all out. Y mientras sigue es lo que está escribiendo y escribiendo cada uno de ellos. And with them looking on in, in curiosity why he just wrote the Ten Commandments, he stands up and says, okay, whoever hasn't sinned, you can throw the first stone. And he's just written the very rules that they've broken. And it says they left from the oldest to the youngest. Put yourself in that moment for a second. As that woman, you're expecting judgment, you're expecting death. You're expecting this one who has claimed to be the son of God to proclaim judgment on you. And he says to the ones that want to judge her, he le dice a los que vinieron a juzgarla, Whoever has not sinned, throw the first stone. El que no haya pecado, que tire la primera piedra. Can you imagine just the utter silence in the room? Se imaginan el silencio que hubo en ese momento. Or actually outside. <laughs> okay. It's pre-translation. That's good. <laughs> It's just silent. Silencio. There's these man, men there with these stones in hand. Con estos hombres con las piedras en las manos. 
the method to her judgment, her execution in their hands. And you can imagine she's probably just still sobbing. And then she hears. <laughs> that was supposed to be a serious moment. <laughs> Praise God, we can have fun. Sorry, I have nothing to drop. <laughs> But she begins to hear the method of her judgment hitting the ground. And listen again to what Jesus says here. He says, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? In verse 10. They say, and the razón se les hubo y dijo, mujer, ¿dónde están los que te acusaban? Has no one condemned you? Ninguno te condenó. You realize Jesus just put every single person there in the exact same boat. Se dan de cuenta de que Jesús los puso todos en el mismo barco. Todas las personas que estuvieron ahí. The people in the nice robes to the lady hiding herself in the bed sheet. De las personas con las mejores ropas hasta con la mujer que estaba en el suelo con, con la sábana. He put them all in the same boat. Los puso en el mismo bote. She says, no one, Lord. Le dijo, no, Señor. And listen to the heart of the Father. Entonces, escucha el corazón de el Padre. To all people. Para toda persona. Because remember, he just put them all in the same boat, right? He says, neither do I condemn you. Y ni yo te condeno. The only one there who had the right to throw the first stone. La única persona que tenía el derecho para tirar la primera piedra. Said, I refuse to. Él dijo, me rehuso. Amen. Amen. And then, because, he's, because he has refused to condemn her. Porque él... Ref, él because she has experienced this love and this mercy. After she is, uh, after he has exchanged her belief. Because she believed she was going to die. She thought she was condemned. He changed her belief. Él cambió su creencia. And now, to change the way she thinks, he said, go and sin no more. He's telling her she is free to go and sin no more. Do you, do you see that? He says, go. She's free. Go. Ve, está libre. Ve. And sin no more. And sin no more. And then let me read this last verse that is most often left out of the story. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Y otra vez Jesús les habló diciendo, yo soy la luz del mundo, el que me sigue no andará en tinieblas, sino que tendrá la luz de la vida. How many parents do we have here? ¿Cuántos padres tenemos aquí? Okay. How many parents did your children have Legos at some point in their life? ¿Cuántos padres tus hijos han tenido Legos en algún momento en su vida? 
How many of you tried walking around in the dark and stepped on a Lego? That's the parent's version of a landmine right there. <laughs> you, you start speaking in tongues. <laughs> What he's saying is, once you know the heart of the Father, that he's not just there wanting to condemn you. But that he loves you. He's just waiting for you to come home. Like the prodigal son, he sees him in the distance. And he runs to him and hugs him and kisses him. He's saying, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. I know I'm merging the two stories. But Jesus told them both, so I'm allowed. <laughs> When you realize the heart of the Father, you now can walk in the light of life. Who did Jesus say was the way, the truth, and the life? He is. Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So when he says you can walk in the light of life, he's, he's saying you, you're walking in the light that I'm bringing you. Now, back to parents and the Legos. You're walking around. You're about to walk through this room. You know it's the the kids' playroom. You got no shoes on. No tienes zapatos. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't want to step on a Lego. And somebody turns on the light. Y alguien prende la luz. You could still step on a Lego, right? Como quiera, te puede trepar encima de un Lego. If you're careless. Si no, no te importa. But you now have the light to see where they're at. Pero ahora tiene la luz para ver dónde están. Yeah. You are now free yeah. to walk through without stepping on a Lego. And that's why Jesus says, go and sin no more. In Jesus, we now have the ability to break the cycle. En Jesús, ahora tenemos la habilidad para romper el ciclo. We're not a slave to that anymore. Ya no somos esclavos a eso. Now, it may take us some work to get so that we live that out. A lo mejor nos tomará un poco de trabajo para vivirlo. I won't speak about you, okay? Because maybe you guys are perfect Christians. No voy a hablar de ustedes porque a lo mejor ustedes son cristianos perfectos. I'll speak for myself. Voy a hablar de mí mismo. Because I know it take, took me a while to even walk at the level I'm walking at. Porque yo sé que me tuvo mucho tiempo para caminar al nivel que yo estoy caminando ahora. And I'm still not perfect. Y como que no sigo perfecto. <laughs> I'm sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> yes, really. See, <laughs> <Sí. laughs> I don't know what really is. <laughs> yes, it's like really is a truth. See, yeah. so, like, like, verdad? Ah. There you go. <laughs> Um, now I forgot where I was going. <laughs> we do this a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a great point I was making. <laughs> Come Holy Spirit. <laughs> Maybe for yourself, they're not perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. It's a journey. Es un caminar. A journey that has a goal of living sin free. 
pecado, soltar el pecado, ser libre. Now, for honest, I don't think we'll ever get absolutely perfect at that until the other side of heaven. Para ser honesto, no creo que seamos perfectos hasta que venga venga Jesús. But I know I live a lot more sin-free than I used to. And as I look forward, I have the expectation that I can be more free in the future. I have a hope because of what Jesus has done. But when we do make a mistake, I have one last little passage to end this on. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 4. This is a very important passage. I'm going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 4, 14 through 16. Hebreo capítulo 4, de 14 y 16. It says, seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. Por tanto, teniendo un gran sumo sacerdote que traspasó los cielos, Jesús, el Hijo de Dios, retengamos nuestra profesión, porque no tenemos un sumo sacerdote que no pueda compadecerse de nuestras debilidades, sino uno que fue tentado en todo según nuestra semejanza, pero sin pecado. Acerquémonos, pues, confiadamente al trono de la gracia para alcanzar misericordia y hallar gracia para el por oportuno socorro. If you don't have verse 16 highlighted in the Bible, I suggest you do it. Si tú no tienes el versículo 16 eh, marcado en tu Biblia, yo te digo, márcalo ahora. Because it says we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Porque dice que venimos confiados, que vengamos confiadamente a la, al trono de la gracia. And it is so important to understand that as we strive to free ourselves from sin. Because if you don't understand the heart of the Father, when you should be coming boldly to ask for His forgiveness, you will instead stay shackled by shame. Si, eh, o si no estuviera atado a las cadenas, si no confiadamente no llegas. A... Shame is a trap. Vergüenza es una trampa. But Jesus came to set us free. Pero Jesús vino a, a liberarnos, ser no, ser no libre. Don't stay in your sin. No te mantengas tu pecado. Don't wallow in the muck. Mud, junk, whatever. <laughs> no camine en la porquería. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Ven directamente al, al trono de la gracia. <laughs> I heard this one guy put it this way. Yo escuché a este hombre diciendo de esta manera. He said, whenever he messes up, que cuando él hace sus errores, he prays to God and says this. Él le ora a Dios y le dice esto. Oh Father, oh Dios. If it wasn't for you, this is what you could expect of me all the time. Si no fuera por ti, esto es lo que tú estuvieras esperando de mí todo el tiempo. I thank you so much for your Son Jesus. Te digo muchas gracias por tu hijo Jesús. Please forgive me. Por favor, perdóname. And help me to rise above it. Y ayúdame a levantarme de esto. And then he walks on as if it never happened. Some of you, that would change your life if you started to do that. But to truly do it, you need to understand the heart of the Father. 
that he loves you. De que él te ama. He loves you. Él te ama. Thank you, Lord. And he's not come to condemn you. Y él no vino para but to set you free. Él pa, él vino para libre. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one more thought. Voy a un, un and then I'm going to close in prayer. Y voy a en but anybody who would like prayer come on up I would Pero love to pray for you I don't care what it's for but I think some of you need someone to pray with you about getting rid of these lies because you think God is still mad at you so this is the final thought I want to share with you did you know you cannot disappoint God <laughs> you know I just saw across the room I saw several guys <laughs> I, I'm seeing this around the room and, I, and I, don't, don't feel bad I'm not pointing fingers because until about a year or so ago, I was in your shoes. Pastor Mitch told me, you cannot disappoint God. And I was like, heretic! No, I wasn't. <laughs> but I didn't believe him. I fought with him about it. If you look up the word disappointment, it actually means, uh, quite literally, to miss an appointment. To, it means to miss an appointment. So, if God, being outside of time, who has already paid for all your sin, what you've done in the past and what you'll do in the future I had a hard time with that one too but when was our sin paid for? it was at the cross, right? do you realize every single one of your sins was in the future? at the cross and he already paid the price for it and being God being all knowing he already knew where you were going to mess up he knows where you messed up yesterday he knows where you'll mess up tomorrow. So how can you disappoint somebody who already knows when you're going to fail? Some, somebody, that's going to free you. That's going to free you up. How can you disappoint somebody who already knows every time you're going to mess up? Does that, does that change your view of the heart of the Father? Let, let me just touch one more thing and then I'm, I'm going to let you go on this. He even knows what you think and still loves you. That one blew my mind when I heard it. God loves you. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. Don't let him steal truth. Don't let him steal the love of the Father from you. The La verdad, yeah, joy, uh, gozo, the truth, or God's love. O el, el amor de Dios. I'm going to pray over you. Voy a orar sobre 
But if you would like prayer on this, especially on this subject, but I don't care if there's anything you need prayer for, come on up. Pero si necesita oración, especialmente en este, en este tema o lo que no, o lo que sea, puede venir hacia arriba. Usually I'm missing the good food when we do this, but today I'm just here to pray. <laughs> so I'm going to pray if you want to go after you're free. But you're not inconveniencing me to come up and receive prayer. Father God, I thank you that you love us so much. You know what we've done, what we'll do, and yet you still love us. You proved that. You proved it, Lord God. When you, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Cuando éramos pecadores, Jesucristo murió por nosotros. I pray that you begin to break the lies off from these people. Oramos que empieces a romper las mentiras sobre estas personas. That those lies that say you just want to punish us. Que esa mentira de que solamente tú quieres condenarnos. If you wanted to just punish us, why would you send your son? Y si tú solamente querías condenarnos, ¿por qué tú enviaste a tu hijo? We thank you that you love us. And I rebuke the lies of the enemy over us. Draw us close to you this week. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And all God's church said, Amen. Amen.